So today's topic is, is on centrality, um, which is basically a measure of how um, vectors, uh, sorry, not vectors, um, the edges or the nodes of a network are centered together, right? Um, and in general, more centered nodes or actors are more crucial to the network structure. Whatever uh, power we are talking about, um, they, are, uh, they would be generally more important to that network, right? Um, well, the thing with centrality um, is it has many uh, different uh, definitions, right? Um, and and we are going to approach uh, some of them, but not all of them. I actually opened up the Wikipedia article on centrality, and there's a lot more to it than this um, book covers. But for now, we shall tackle the uh, measures that are being discussed here and try to gain some insight into the strengths and weaknesses of each uh, measure. Um, so for starters, um, I actually went ahead and repeated or basically pasted, copy pasted the whole thing into my own um, our studio notebook. And uh, yeah, but, but the output was generally just the same as the um, notebook here and zooming in in this notebook generally works better. So I will stick to um, the data here for now and maybe we can experiment with the RStudio later if you'd like. Um, so we start by loading the library. We load iGraph and Tidyverse. Uh, I haven't still mastered working with Tidygraph, so I haven't done that. And uh, we also will use reshape later on, specifically the melt function, I believe. So anyways, um, the data set we're currently discussing is uh, about some uh, 15th century uh, families in Italy. Um, and, and the question of interest in this particular data set was how a certain family, despite being an upstart family, managed to rise up through the ranks. And uh, yeah, so um, in, in network terms, that would be a less powerful family managing to accumulate power. And um, we would try to understand uh, the different aspects of that power through the network measures we're about to apply. Um, Hello, Ella. We, we just started, so uh, you, you haven't missed anything pretty much. Just the, uh, we, we just discussed the data set we are about to um, be using in the notebook. So yeah, it's, it's just a data set about um, some Italian families in the 15th century Italy. And uh, we want to understand how uh, one family managed to sort of gain some gain political power increasingly during that period, despite being a relatively small one. Um, and uh, the whole picture would involve looking at many variables, but for a simplified example, which we're going through here, we'll only discuss the marriage relationships or the marital relationships between the families. As you might have heard, um, marriage in, in those times was politi a political tool. And uh, so two families that are married together are generally more strongly tied together. And um, therefore that would affect uh, the power balance or political power balance uh, in the political scene at the time. Um, yeah, so as usual, we load the data set from GitHub and uh, so I'm not sure which is which, but the attributes uh, that in the end comes up with the adjacency um, matrix, which um, contains these two variables in the end, the wealth of each family and the priorities. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, which basically is a count of the number of family members for each family that um, are uh, in the city council and is therefore a sort of crude measure of how politically powerful powerful a, each family is at the time. Um, so 
for starters, we start by plotting that um, network of wealth using wealth as the, um, no, no, we haven't specific, used any sizes yet. So the size is, is just constant, right? And this is the networks connecting each one, each family to the other. And this is a directed network uh, where the arrow means that a family has sent their daughter to be married to the uh, into the other family or to marry the son uh, of the other family. And so if you find, for example, I'll try to. I think you in. could zoom, you could zoom in inside our markdown, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have right? tried. But okay. uh, you mean in the website or in the studio? Uh, I think in the book down, uh, previously it worked for me. Like if you could go and then just, uh, if, mm -hmm. if you could use the, your mouse pad and just bench it. Uh, yes, doing that, but it, it sort of goes out of scale and brings me to the top of the notebook. So it's, yeah. No, no, go, go on, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So for example, for the, I'll try to read those names. So for the Alessandri and the Tanagli family, these two families are, have an, a, an, a directed link going both ways between them, which means that each family's daughter has been married to uh, one of the other family's sons. And uh, yeah, and, and looking at the families right in the center, uh, they are the marriage, the marital scene, or, Let's let's go about it in another way. Let the their sons and their daughters are married to other families of influence, uh, which makes them more central to the graph. Essentially, um, for example, if we look at the Strozzi family, whose name will be coming up a lot later, you'll find that there are a lot of arrows going into that family, which means that they have a lot of men essentially there are boys who are married uh who's uh, that the other families have sent their daughters to marry them yeah um i hope that was clear enough um great again the zooming thing sends me right to the top okay so let's start by uh well, the author first asks which family do you expect is most central? Um, well, the readability of the network is not uh, at the best it could be, but um, yeah, I think uh, we would all agree that the families right at the center with the most connections would be the most central families in that data set. Um, okay. So, so he, in, in this context, central would mean the family was the uh, who, who so they got their their daughters married to many other families or is it the other way around no i, I think it's the other think, way around yeah i think it can go both ways because um despite the well actually i think um I'm asking because usually Understand. I'm not sure if the centrality measure would take into account the direction or maybe it will be like the, the number of uh, edges or the number of connections. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and, and that's actually what the ah. uh, note here exactly discusses. Um, and I, I was actually about to see which one was specified in the current example. It, nothing was specified actually. So um, I think both were counted. And if you think about it logically, I think um, it would work just as well if in both cases, right? You, you were, nonetheless, you were in any how, I mean, you were connected to the family of the other family. So if you had a daughter or if you had a son, um, or not, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it's a family business. <laughs> yeah. I think the uh, mentioned is that um, it counts only uh, edges, uh, nodes. So it's not about the, the direction. I mean, what was the meaning of, um, in this case, 
in this um, married network, um, if we calculated the edge, uh, edges, uh, edges only in node direction. So this uh, means what? Yeah, I, th I think it essentially means that we are treating uh, the net, the directed network as an undirected network in that particular measure, um, which means that the relationship, uh, whether your family has had a, a daughter that it would marry into the other family, or if it had a son that would marry the other family's daughter, essentially both relationships will be quantified the same when measuring the degree centrality. Um, but um, I don't know if that is the case for the um, other measures of, of centrality as well. And this is, raises a very good point. I actually haven't thought of this while I was going over the notebook. So it would be interesting to think of this as we go through the chapter today. Mm -hmm. So the uh, family in question, the Medici family, turns out to be heavily connected uh, in this network, um, despite being an upstart family. Uh, so I guess that could have been, had played a uh, role in, in their rise to political power at the time. And we also see the Strozzi family, which was one of the most heavily connected families in the diagram before. It has about 50 edges going in or out of, so yeah. Um, skimming through the rest of the numbers, most of them do not even exceed 20. So these two families are probably the most heavily connected ones and the others just closely uh, follow closely after. Um, as we can see, um, not really, but <laughs> in this um, network, I'll just. Uh, I, I find it very uh, interesting that the Medici family came on the top of the list because uh, I, I've I've read a, a little about them before. You know, there was also this Netflix series about them and the power they oh. had accumulated, and their connection with the with the church and their role in shaping the arts and. Yeah, but I don't know. Wow. I haven't heard about the other family, but the Medici. So it's not a. It's it's a, maybe it's an actual data. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Actually, you you you're like, I think I'm gonna be watching that as as soon as we're done. I actually have nothing to do afterwards, and that could be a nice thing to do. Yeah. Um, you could perhaps send me later the name of that uh, movie or series or whatever. Yeah. Uh, okay. So apparently, as not well, so we have incorporated the degree values here into the vertex size. So more heavy, more heavily connected families have larger circles, and less heavily connected families have smaller circles. And um, if we look really hard, we'll find that the Strozzi family lies right at the center of this big circle. And uh, I'm not sure where the Medici family is, um, but yeah, I think it's this one here. I'm, I hope you're seeing my mouse as I move up. But yeah, the circle will be there and the name will be right there. Yeah. So what they did here in order to make this more uh, friendly, they um, multiplied the value multiplied by three in order to make the circles more visible. This way, for example, the families which are connected the least over here, are their vertices are much more visible and the larger ones started to look like Venn diagrams. Yeah. Um, and actually we could experiment with this a little bit more by like, where is the one? Yeah, that's one. We can decrease the label size to something like 0 0.2 and try to see how that look. Yeah, not very helpful either. Um, the yeah. text, unfortunately, is not very readable. Um, but yeah. Also, I, I think that uh, here, it, they, I think they have scaled the, so first they made the size of the node proportional to the degree to make it mm -hmm. easier to read. But then the scaling uh, was not to make things more visible, but they wanted to make the, it, they wanted to make the difference more visible between the small, uh, the families with less connection and the families with large connection. Like you multiply it, and then the ones with larger connections will have mm -hmm. larger size. 
compared to the, the to the smaller one. Um, I was also trying to like figure out a good way to balance this. Um, so this is better than before. Um, I'm trying to make the labels more visible, proportionally yeah. visible to the size of the circle. And you can faintly see the Strozzi and the Medici families in the background here. Yeah. Now it's more like a word cloud. Yeah, <laughs> definitely true. This is why like, I, I like Tidygraph more because it, it takes you more time to get up and running with it. But once you're getting grips with the tools, uh, you have more power uh, and you can modify a lot of things in the, in, in the, in the plot of the mm -hmm. graph. I will uh, be working on it and hopefully in my next turn, I will have mastered how to work with that graph a little bit more. Okay. Um, so to sum up, we just measured the degree centrality, the most basic uh, measure of centrality. Next, we're going to measure the between the centrality. So something that is very um, thematic, I would say, in studying networks is studying the shorted path between any two nodes, right? And uh, between the centrality shares into that same that theme as well. Um, for a given node, um, if it lies on uh, the shortest path between the combinations of each two nodes in that particular network, then it means it's um, more crucial. So. Um, since we're all Egyptians here, let's let's take an example from Egypt. Um, if, for example, you want to go to point B from point A to point B, and you have to go through Tahrir Square, right? Um, and then you want to go from B to C, and you also have to go through Tahrir Square. That means that Tahrir Square has a high between the centrality, right? Whereas, for example, if it's a random point in the network that is situated in the periphery, and in order to go to between any two points, at a given trial, you wouldn't have to go through it, then it would not have a very high between the centrality. I, I hope that explanation made sense. Um, so in the context of our example, uh, it means that it's a family that can mediate a lot of the communications between the other families, right? Since it's married, so uh, relationships are, uh, more calculated and more distributed in a calculated way in a sense uh, that it would that they would be uh, crucial to connect the periphery of the network yeah um i hope that made sense so let's let's skim through the numbers here for the between the centrality of the different families and uh, while the Medici family has a relatively high. We can find that other families that have not come up before also have a high between the centrality. Um, the Peruzzi family actually had a high degree centrality before it was around 30, which was also relatively high. Um, and uh, I think the Ridolfi family was not there before, but now it has a relatively high um, between the centrality, although not as large as the biggest two families in the data set. Um, so yeah, we go on to try and um, plot the network, and I don't think, oh yeah, they, they actually went on to scale this, um, multiplying, dividing it by the very highest centrality, which was the uh, Strozzi families, and then multiplying it by 20. So all values would be from higher than zero, than zero or zero uh, from zero to 20. And the Strozzi family would be 20 in this example. And so you can find is, uh, I'm just thinking about the previous uh, graph and you scroll up. Yeah. Yes, this. This one? Um, um, I'm just wondering why 
um, maybe most families um, can be considered uh, the between in, in between sex uh, centrality. I mean, wh why? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, why most families uh, can be considered in this myth in between centrality or just mediate the relationship uh, between all families and each other. Well, um, because uh, when we consider them because they, um, so if, for example, let's go with visual examples because I like them a lot. Um, and the clearest graph was this one. So we will go with it, okay? So for example, let's think about this family, the Tate Salvi family. If it wants to be connected uh, to to get in touch with the Scolari family, right? Uh, then how it can do that through this network? The only way it can do that is by going through the Genori family, and then the Genori would then connect them to the Scolari family, right? And the next example would be this family. If it wants to connect to the Scolari family, it would also have to go through the Genori family. So, and this is the shortest path to this family, right? Um, and so that makes the Genori family have a higher between the centrality because this was the shortest path from these two families to the Scolari family. It had to go through the Genori family in that example, and that makes it much more important in that measure, and therefore have a higher value. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, I'm understanding that, but uh, I'm just wondering why um, uh, why all families, uh, however their uh, weight or their number or their value, um, each family considered the um, um, mediate the relationship between other families. I mean, it's more complex um, than this network. Uh, you, you mean based on the shape of the of the graph? Because if if uh, yes, okay. But anyway, here it's a, it's a very difficult to make any judgment based on the shape of the graph. Like here, it's a, in this one, it's more clear. So here you could see that as Abrahman has said, like maybe it's only uh, four or five families that have a high centrality, a high betweenness. Uh, and this is how you can make your, your decision. Like, for example, if you're uh, wondering which measure of centrality uh, you would use, this one or the degree, you could make this plot and see uh, how many families pop up. Here you could see like there are only five or, or less, but maybe in the degree there were maybe a higher number or less number. So this is how you would... Uh, make your judgment on which metric you would use. But not, not all families have the same uh, betweenness or the same uh, um, mediating uh, importance in the graph. You mean the same degree, not, not uh, betweenness, right? Degree no, so, of... Uh, no, so, uh, the, so the, the degree and betweenness are, are both uh, ways of measuring centrality or the importance. The difference is the degree. You could think of it as a, like a very direct way of answering this. So if, if someone knows a lot of people, is very connected, then you would say that this is the most central. So for example, if you have a, a protein that is uh, interacting with other proteins, or you have uh, a gene that is in a larger, in a very large network of genes, then you would say that this uh, gene is very uh, interesting or it's very central because it's connected to other genes or other proteins, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, another view would be to look at the genes that have uh, connections between different pathways, okay? So for mm -hmm. example, in the first, in the first view, maybe you have a gene that is connected to other genes, but these connections, you can, uh, if you have, you have a, lot of, a lot of connections, but these connections are not very important. So maybe you could uh, remove one connection and then the, the network would stay intact. It wouldn't be affected as much. 
But if a, if a gene is connecting two pathways and then one of these connections is are, uh, are lost, then these two pathways are disconnected, yeah? So it's like a bridge. Like if, if you have two, if you have an island, if you have an island, and two islands, and these two islands are connected with a bridge. This bridge is very important, yeah. Mm. Otherwise, you couldn't, you can't uh, move maybe goods or between the two islands. Uh, but if you have a large city and there are many bridges all over the city, if one bridge is not there, then you could use another bridge or you could use another uh, way to go around the city. So between this, it's uh, in interesting because it looks more about on the edges and the importance, the weight of the edge. Uh, but the degree uh, centrality gives all edges the same weight. Between this gives the edges different weights. So it gives more weights to the edges that connects uh, different clusters or uh, maybe uh, different parts of the network. Yeah. So this is the betweenness. So for, for example, like a, a practical example in my work, if, uh, if you could think of uh, a developing organ or a, or a developing tissue, okay? And mm -hmm. then this tissue would have different stages. And there is one stage that you could, uh, the, the, the organ during development would go through this stage. And this stage if, is very uh, central, not because it's connected to all stages, but because it's the, it's, uh, how, how to say it? You, you will need to pass, it's the, the only way to go through the development is to go through this pathway or uh, to use the transcription factor that controls this transition state. So this transition state or this mediating effect that Abdurrahman has said, this is what makes between this important. So it shows us the um, how to extend uh, this bridge important uh, between uh, each relation uh, between relationships, right? So it's uh, it's major the importance itself. Uh, yeah. So it's it, it's difficult. Like I usually I make a use of like a visual <laughs> aid or something because I, I'm not very good at describing you it. You can annotate actually if you would like. Yeah. Um, uh, so I I have thought of another example while Muhammad was explaining. Uh, so if we, for example, decide to or to sort of delete the Strozzi family from this graph, okay, then if and the Bocelli family, for example, wanted to get in touch with the Rondinelli family, right, and uh, usually they were so dependent on the Strozzi family because they would directly put them in touch with the other family right but now that this is not they are no longer existing they would have for example to go through here to here to here right to take a very complex and that would be their hypothetically shortest route uh, to the to contacting the Rodinelli family right which means that that's how crucial uh, the Strozzi family was uh, for for this shortest route without it the shortest route becomes something else, right? And uh, they were an integral part of the shortest route between those two families. And if we were to consider two other examples, for example, the Parsh family and the Pan family, something similar would, would pop up if we were to uh, remove the Strozzi family from the diagram. Uh, so they constitute many shortest paths between any two families in the diagram. Um, does that make sense? It does for, for me, yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, so that was between the centrality, right? Now we will move on to the next measure of centrality, which is called closeness. Closeness essentially makes the same use of the shortest paths theme we discussed earlier. Um, but it measures the distance uh, between one node and the other node. And, and we will go over how it's measured in a second. So farness for a, any given node is the average distance from that node to all other nodes. If we go through that example, it's the average distance between the Strozzi and the 
this and this and this and this and this, right? We calculate all the distances and then we calculate the average. But closeness would be the reciprocal of farness, right? And, and think about it this way. Um, closeness favors um, families with less connections. Um, have it because if a family has a lot of connections, then essentially it would have a higher chance of uh, having a lower closeness value. Uh, if the calculation is, is just as written, I, I believe it would be that way. Um, so the way it is calculated here, it would be um, a number over furnace. So the higher the furnace, the lower the closeness, right? And the furnace would be higher if um, um, actually maybe I am. I'm, I've not thought this through very well. So yeah, yeah, just ignore what I just said. It was not very well thought uh, through. Um, but in anyhow, um, because any node has to be connected to the rest of the network if it is connected to at least one node, right? Um, and the shortest paths or the average distance from that node to all other nodes uh, would could would be calculated anyway because it is connected to all of the other nodes. Um, I just made a, another assumption. So. My assumption assumed that, for example, for these two families here that are only connected to one another, their closeness has to be very high, right? Because they're only connected to one another and that um, value essentially would be uh, one in fairness. And therefore, if you convert it to closeness would be one over one, it would be equal to one, right? Whereas, but, for example, uh, for something like... Yeah. No, no, go, go on with the, with the rest of the example. Whereas if you think about the Strozzi family, for example, and you you need to travel to a lot of the other families there, uh, but uh, thinking about it another way, if you take the example of the Pucci family, uh, then you would, and you need to go then, for example, um, this part of the graph would be very accessible, but this part would be quite far, right? And so that essentially puts the strategy at an advantage in terms of that metric. However, I don't know what it would be uh, for the isolated um, nodes over here, and it would be nice to check out. Um, yeah, you 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 could if you could go back to the notebook, you would see that uh, uh, I graph will give you a message. No, uh, on the top. Oh. Go okay. go go up. Yeah. So you could see yeah. here that it gives you a warning that uh, closeness centrality is not well defined for disconnected graphs, because it makes yeah. sense if, if we are disconnected, uh, there, we, we can't measure the it's it's not reliable. Uh, mm -hmm. And and this is one of the things that is so for example, like for degree centrality, you could uh, measure it for disconnected graphs. But for closeness yeah. centrality, uh, you, you can do this. Uh, I actually remember doing this in our studio. The uh, uh, warning message did not pop up, um, which was um, quite, um, yeah. So for the Della Casa, which was one of the isolated, no, it's the Della Scarfa. Yeah. I just want to compare the values between here and there because uh, I think, yeah. Could could you sort them like after closeness make uh, by sort and What's then the see it, uh, like like a uh, pipe like uh, What's a pipe? so it's a a percentage sign and then larger than okay. percentage sign or control M yeah and then run it again. Okay. Okay, yeah, now it's sorted. Yeah, so the Delos Carfa, one of the isolated families, actually have a closeness centrality of one. Uh, yeah, which uh, is, yeah. This and is, yeah, whereas unfair in our example. Yeah, true. But I think it was not the same here. I'm not sure. It would be hard because the different versions of our. Um, 
I think, deal with this particular problem differently. But why? Yeah, so this is the Dallas car figure. Um, the okay. centrality value here is different. Um, oh, okay. So I think it somehow connected it to the closest node and uh, calculated the closeness centrality. But I'm not sure. <coughs> I let you I let, trying to see. Yeah. I'm just thinking why most values uh, are 0.0, uh, 0 0.00. I mean, um, what is the value of the isolated uh, families? Yeah, so let's discuss the first part of that question. So if you take that number, for example, and we put it as the reciprocal, so zero, zero, one, one, zero, eight, zero, two, three, a number that is quite large will come up, which is the average distance between that node and the other nodes in the in the graph or the farms, right? Um, and so, yes, in other words, the distance between um, this node, the scarfa, for example, and all the other nodes combined divided by the number of nodes is around that much. I'm not sure why is such a large number though. Um, uh, is it? Yeah, it is the average distance. So 900 is quite a large number for the average distance between that many nodes. The number of nodes is not even 900. So how can it be 900? Not exactly but it's sure. the, the connections maybe. So because the, uh, I think the distance here is calculated, which I think it's important. It's a uh, is uh, they call it the geodesic distance. So it's the number of edges it takes you to go from one node to the other. Mm. So this could uh, get higher when the, the 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 network is not very well connected, because the shortest path between any two nodes will be uh, larger and larger. Yeah, but the maximum length of one path essentially would not exceed the maximum number of nodes in the network or so i believe unless the geodesic distance does not count each edge uh, by factor of one uh it's so, scaled you mean i it I'm yes. not sure yeah so these families uh, just by eyeballing them i'm quite sure that this these are not 900 families these are much less than 900 so yeah uh, so perhaps there is some sort of uh, other factor at play here that we're not aware of. <clears throat> um, so the average distance from one node to all other nodes. Ah, so it's okay. The values are actually quite different as well. So I think they were downscaled by some factor because of how it previously dealt with the disconnected uh, islets. Um, yeah. Again, I'm not sure, but that could be the case. So, so for me, the results you have here makes more sense because the De Los Carfa, if it's connected to only one family, so it's one divided by one, so it would be one. And exactly. the fact that you have a Medici and the Strozzi as the the top, con, uh, yeah. top uh, closeness family, also this is a uh, I, I, something expected. Yeah. yeah. And if we find the reciprocal of this in order to calculate the furnace, it would make much more sense, I think. Yeah, 195, That's that number is much more believable than the previous one. Um, yeah. So anyways, um, that was the closeness centrality. And this is how it is plotted. Um, and this, uh, graph. So in this particular example, the isolated families are not, uh, do not uh, enjoy a high value, uh, like in the R studio, and the other families pretty much have very similar values. If we manage to pick out the families of interest in the Medici and the Strozzi families, you'll find that 
they're pretty much indistinguishable in terms of size. Um, there are differences, but they're not very distinguishable in that particular example. So yeah. Um, okay. Um, do you have any more points you'd like to raise or should we move on to the eigenvectors in Charlie? I'm good. Okay. Okay, so next the measure centrality is the eigenvector centrality. And uh, I actually spent quite some time trying to understand how this relates to the other measures, specifically the bonus centrality, which we're gonna discuss right afterwards. So uh, a nice thing about this is that if you have two families in question and one family is connected to all the powerful people, uh, uh, and for starters, both families are connected to the same number of other families, right? But one family is connected to very powerful families, whereas the other family is connected to rather mediocre ones. Then if you were to quantify the political power uh, of both families, they would not be equal, right? The one, and under that assumption, the one connected to the more powerful families would be much more powerful than the other one, right? And that's what eigenvector centrality tries to measure here. Um, and uh, what we do here is that we, we use the function ev cent and we take out the vector uh, part of it and not the whole uh, list. Um, I hope I've understood it correctly. Um, and following the calculations that were done here and checking out our families of interest, we see that Strozzi and Medici do have quite high values, but they are also um, crowded by other families like this one and this one. And then this one, yes. So I actually did not understand very well how would eigenvectors um, pick out that property out of the graph. And so I found this quite nice article, which we can go through. So it takes a much simpler uh, graph made up of five nodes, and this is its adjacency matrix. And then it calculates the degree centrality of each vertex, uh, which is the number of connections going into that uh, node. And the following vector comes up, three, two, three, three, one. And then what they do next is that they multiply the degree vectors by the adjacency matrix. And note that the minus symbols here, the diagonal, which signify the network being connected to itself uh, is treated as zeros in the multiplication process done here. Mm -hmm. And so what would come out is essentially a uh, weighting of the connections of the adjacency matrix. So if the value of a certain connection is one, then it is multiplied by the respective value in the centrality vector and passed on to the next vector. Whereas if the value is zero, then it is canceled out and is not reflected in the next uh, vector. So if we try to compare uh, the degree centrality values on the graph we have with the newer uh, vector that we just calculated, you'll find that while each of these three nodes are connected to the same number of uh, nodes. They are not treated the same in the vector we just calculated. And you'll find specifically that this node, while it was connected to four other nodes, the same as these two, but it has a lower number because the, th the fourth node that it is connected to is not as well as connected uh, as the other two nodes it's connected to, uh, whereas these two central nodes are connected to very heavily connected nodes, and so they enjoy uh, a higher value. And uh, what they did next was they that they um, like transformed how it looked in order to make this more visually uh, palatable. And yeah, and then they go on to um, connect that to eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And, and as you may all remember, 
an eigenvector is a vector that if multiplied by a matrix, it would essentially scale the values of the matrix by a constant value, uh, which would be the eigenvalue. And this is the perhaps recognizable equation where the M matrix multiplied by the, by the eigenvector would be equal to, uh, sorry, uh, the M, uh, I'm not sure which is which. Yes, the matrix is the M, um, but I think something is confused. But anyways, the eigenvector multiplication by the matrix would essentially be equal to just scaling the matrix by a constant value. Um, and so calculating the eigenvector centrality, uh, something else actually came up while I was trying to look this up in Google. Um, and I want to see this with you guys. I'm not sure if you are short on time. Uh, I will try to finish by 8.30 if that's okay. If not, I could rush things along to finish earlier. Um, so let me know if I'm taking too long. I am quite sad that I actually closed the um, Wikipedia page that discussed in some more detail, but that was not the result I was looking for. Uh, maybe I will uh, come back later once I remember where it was exactly, because I don't want to waste your time. But yeah. um, you could still share it on the Slack channel, please. Yeah. What that particular note said was that uh, the eigenvector measures uh the number of edges of each node uh into infinity and it relates it to the bon uh, such centrality that actually takes only a uh, constant number of edges coming uh, for each node something like that but i haven't been quite sure this uh, was the first time for me to hear about this centrality measure the bon I, I haven't yeah. seen it before to be honest Actually, the example we're about to go into makes it quite uh, uh, intuitive. So let's actually go through it right now. So in Banasaj centrality, uh, they dive right into the example saying that uh, if a family would marry their daughters off to weaker rather than stronger families, they would essentially have political influence over them and they would uh, be able to control them in a sense, right? And so in the process, make themselves more powerful. So under that assumption, Bonasech centrality uh, utilizes a power exponent uh, that if positive would make uh, families stronger if they are connected to more powerful families and if negative, would make families stronger if they are connected to weaker families, right? And in that particular example of marrying your daughter to weaker families, the bonus centrality would be higher because you would then be using a negative exponent, um, uh -huh. right? Yes. Um, the, the exact way it is calculated is not mentioned, but I imagine the recursion is quite similar to what is to what is done in the eigenvector, where you multiply it by a certain process multiple times, and being exponent having a negative two exponent would perhaps flip it around. I, I'm not quite sure actually. I'm just speculating. Um, maybe we could like uh, check out the formula how how this algorithm is is actually formulated to gain deeper understanding. But in that particular case, um, we see that a family like the Strozzi is not quite uh, powerful in this measure. And the, the power dynamic shifts completely um, to other families. I can't also see the Medici family in this graph, um, but some other families just pop up. 
yeah, the the uh, edge list was not printed, unfortunately. Not the edge list, the centrality, the value of the, the table of values, of centrality of values was not printed. So we can't do that eyeballing thing we did earlier. Um, and also, you can see here that it was scaled by the maximum, normalized by the maximum, and then scaled by 22 in order to make the graph more visible. <clears throat> Um, would you like to discuss this more or shall we move forward? So, so just to make sure that I got it right. So here, larger nodes would indicate fa families that are, co that are con connected to families with less connections. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so those families would be dependent on them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. I get it. So, yeah. So the strategy is essentially connected to all those major families, uh, primarily, right? So those families are not uh, dependent on them exclusively, right? Okay. And and that would actually also uh, it brings to mind some scenarios of power dynamics in, in the wild and in. in in social context in, in monkeys, for example, which says that if a the 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 leader of the pack, if his tyrant, if he's too much of a tyrant, then the two or more monkeys that are not uh, as powerful but quite powerful, relatively powerful, would like be able to uh, work together in order to bring him down. And so um, they are not exclusively dependent on them. They are powerful in their own regard. Um, yeah. And they could work together in that, in that sense. Yeah, I hope that this, makes this sense. Is, <laughs> yeah, this is interesting because this you, you could formulate it in uh, like uh, a measure of stability of a network because if you have this uh, the large difference between one network that has all the power, but everything else doesn't, uh, match it in any way in power, then you would have a network that is very uh, unstable. There might be some re revolution or something that uh, might yeah. happen. So this is an interesting view. Yeah, like, I think I, this is what I enjoy about uh, network. Like you could take one example and see how it would generalize. But I see that uh, in essence, like Punechi seems to be the opposite of eigenvector centrality. So an eigenvector, you like here you penalize the the nodes based on how uh, the, the the connectedness of their connected nodes. But an eigenvector, you you promote them, like you give more weight, you give more value to the ones that are connected to more connected things. Uh, so I think that if you could, uh, if you if one changed the the exponent. The uh, yeah, Ponichi uh, could give you the same results as eigenvector centrality. Like if it's positive, and I think maybe it's one, then you're it's expected that you would get the same result as uh, eigenvector, maybe. Uh, it actually produced an error. OK. Near singular A or out of memory. Uh, I think it's not out of memory since it worked with two. Um, I'm not sure it, it didn't have to do with how the algorithm is formulated. Yeah. But how does and, this network uh, now compare to the eigenvector centrality? Um, so this is the eigenvector centrality. The strategy okay. family is quite large, but here it's not as large. Um, it's oh, also okay. quite small. So they are different, uh, and they're not. They cannot produce one another, or at least the Bonacci, or whatever it's called, Bonacci that cannot reproduce the eigenvector. Uh, but yeah. it, it, I think it captures the similar property if a positive exponent was used. No, <laughs> I, I think I was wrong. Like now, it would, uh, it would, it, it would give more weight to the weak families that are connected to strong families 
yeah. right? It, it would be it would be the opposite. Like previously, it it uh, gave more weight to the strong families that are connected to weak families, but now it will give uh, the node size would indicate those weak families that are connected to strong families. Well, it would I think have to we would need to think about the number of connections as well. So. If it's like taking an average across the number of connections, then it would treat a family with one connection the same as a family with like 50 connections, since it would be calculated to be average. Um, okay. But I'm thinking uh -huh. it's, it doesn't do that since we see that uh, the more peripheral families are larger than the more central ones. So, so um, th this would make sense, yeah, because if you if you have a family that is uh, doesn't have a lot of connections but it's only connected to the Strozzi, Strozzi or the Medici, then yeah, it will yeah. have very high weight. But uh, something like Strozzi or the Medici, because they are also very connected to one another and they mm. match each other power, they will have small, yeah. yeah. Interesting okay. measure, like That's... I haven't heard about it before. But yeah, how still... I, I actually... mm -hmm. But how uh, does it still um, measure the reality of families? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? Uh, I mean, how does this um, network measure the reality of families? Uh, I mean, the, the weaker uh, families? So a weak family here is a family that is not very well connected, right? So for example, these two families are quite weak because they are only connected to one another. And a strong family, like the Strozzi family is connected to most of the families on the graph, right? Um, the decrease centrality is around 50 and the number of nodes here can be very close to 50, I assume. So they are connected to most of the families on the graph, right? Um, does that make sense? I mean, they mentioned uh, previously on this network that uh, can be 10 measures in reality of families. Uh, I mean, the less connected families. So how does this work? I, I, I'm not sure I understand the question clearly. Ali, can you perhaps try asking it uh, in another way so that I can perhaps understand what you are trying to convey? Uh, can you return to, um, to a clarification yeah. under the um, network name? So which can, which part of the can you please scroll scroll up? Okay. Yes. Um, the first line. This one. No, no. Oh. Uh, the first line. The I think degree centrality. Uh, no. Okay. Then which one do you mean? Could you maybe copy the, the line in the chat? This would be... Uh, the Bonistus the, the centrality? Uh-huh. Oh, the first line here, right? Yes. OK. Is so that a good way to ensure exactly? the reality? Yeah, because you would have so more power. So for example, like if the two families have the same power, yeah, uh, then if one's uh, daughter and the other's son got married, they still have the same power, yeah? So there may be some tension and they might not be very loyal because they think that they are have the same power. But for example, if you have your daughter and you got your daughter married to a family, but this family is weaker than you, then you are sure that oh the 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 guy her her uh, husband wouldn't would stay loyal to her because he benefits more from this relation by being her husband. Like for example, if if you have a marriage, you have a relationship, and the relationship uh, both sides they benefit the same from each other, then they might consider to maybe change this relationship or break it or have another relationship. But for example, if you have a relationship which is uh, unbalanced, like one 
benefits more from the other. And in this case, the one that would benefit more is the weaker family, yeah? So here you would uh, be sure that your daughter would have a loyal husband because the husband uh, is weaker. He benefits from this connection to her fathers, uh, to her family. And then he would uh, think maybe twice or three times before breaking this connection. Yeah, So he would stay loyal to her. And in less eloquent terms, she can control him. Yeah, <laughs> okay, exactly. Yeah. So in terms of algorithm here, um, measuring the um, stability of network, um, how still this uh, can make us sure, um, ensure the reality? So, um, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, we were just speculating about the whole stability thing um, and uh, because this measure in particular, I believe, would mean different things depending on the context. Um, so, yeah, it was mere speculations. Uh, I, I agree with that, Rahman, yeah. For, for me, it was, I was just speculating of another way to look at uh, stability because you could also think of stability. There, there are different measures for stability. So, for example, if, if you have a, a network and uh, nodes are connected to everything is connected to everything then this is very stable because if you if you dropped one edge one connection you could also still be connected to other nodes with the same with another connection yeah so mm -hmm. but uh, an unstable network is uh, a network where it will get fragmented or it will be separated if you drop uh, one edge yeah or like the a few few edges so because these edges will be very very important but i was thinking of another way of thinking oh maybe if you have a ponechi centrality that is high then this means that there is a power imbalance or the cent centrality imbalance uh, in the network yeah Okay. <clears throat> so the next measure they go over is Google's page rank measure. I am not sure uh, why is that used for exactly. Perhaps you can Google it together right away. And so th this was yeah, the first website yeah. the search engine. It was the first yeah. one. It was developed by Google. Yeah, that that tracks the uh, the search results uh, according to the importance. Yeah, um, or according. Um, so it's, it was named after Larry Page, which was on the Congress. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, <clears throat> and what it does is it uses random marks to identify. Uh, families who are commonly encountered along such walls and uh, they are viewed as central and, and a random box in, in that context would be that it would pick a certain family at random and then walk in a random direction for a random number of steps I imagine and count how many families were encountered during that walk and then repeat that and see which families were encountered the most during those walks um, and in that case, there, those individuals or those families would be viewed as central. And uh, as expected, the Trojan family was quite central, right? Uh, since you have a very high chance of coming across the Trojan family if you were to pick any of the other families uh, that are dependent on it. Uh, but some other families also come up here. And I'm um, not sure if the Medici family is one of them. I think this circle represents it, but I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah. And also we find here that it was normalized. I think normalization and scaling here has become a regular theme recurring across the upcoming measures. So uh, we've discussed like 
one, two, three, four, five, six different measures of centrality. And I would like to understand more how uh, and what each measure actually measures and, and how they correlate to one another, right? And so what we do here is that we will create an adjacency matrix covering the correlation values of each measure and we would correlate it to one another and to the wealth of each family. And uh, this is what the graph shows. Um, so the diagonal would mean that each value has a perfect correlation to itself, just as what you would expect. Something interesting here uh, is that none of the values here correlate to the number of priorities for each family, which is the number of people uh, of that family uh, having a position in the city council. So another measure of political power. However, they do correlate quite well to uh, wealth, which is another measure of political power, if you'd say, right? And uh, so the but, bluer value uh -huh. is, is, yeah. I think here it's missing. I think it's missing value because it's grayed out. So it's- Oh yeah, it's not uh, read yeah. through. Exactly. I think here it's a missing value or something has to do with the calculations. Yeah, maybe. Um, could you please tell me how to treat priorities as numeric? Then we could perhaps, if it's like coded as string and uh -huh, therefore yeah. could so be correlated. Maybe we, we could have a look on the melted format. Uh, you have this data frame. Yeah. You, you could highlight it, highlight melted format. Okay. Uh, right. uh, yeah, and then uh, run like uh, control, control, uh, enter. Yeah, and no, no, on, only the object, only melted format. Yeah, yeah, this. I, I just did that, but nothing showed up. Uh, is it supposed to? Yeah, but because here you run the command, uh, what I'm trying to say is to just the melted format, the object itself, not the not the melting function, like you could remove the melting function. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then run it now. Exactly, yeah. So you would see that prior rate is NA. So here it's missing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in, anyway, you could you could uh, go on. I think maybe it has to do something with the, with the way it was treated. Maybe it was not actually a numeric value. This is why it was NA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, if we want to examine how each of the uh, centrality measures correlate to one another though, you'll find that the bonus centrality is the most, it, it stands out as being the most different, right? Um, compared to the other measures. Whereas um, the other measures are rather and, and even the closeness centrality is quite different to the others, but the bonuses stands out even more. But page rank, eigenvector betweenness, and degree are somewhat more similar to one another. Um, so if you like, try to make it out, you'll find a sort of hashtag sign right here, right? Yeah. Uh, where the other values are more well correlated, signifying the other four measures of centrality. Okay. Now the next uh, section was was quite complicated for me to be honest. So they try to understand them further by looking at their distributions, and uh, so this part was not quite intuitive for me to understand. Um, and they try to fit a degree distribution on the log log scale. So I understand how they use the log to scale. The values, but I don't understand what's the alter has what's the values exactly. Um, so they did a degree, this degree function on the marriage net, mm -hmm. and then tabulated it, mm -hmm. and then turned the names of that table into numbers or treated them as numeric, right? But I would need to look at the <clears throat> table itself in order to understand. What kind of values are these? Are these so? This is what you wanted me to do, right? Um, so, 
So it's the oh, decreases okay. relative for each family. Basically. So you see the the function table. Mm -hmm. So the so you, you know like the table what what table would does is that it would uh, calculate uh, the number of families with the same degree centrality. So here you have uh, twenty two oh, families oh. with four centrality, okay. yeah, and then yeah. you have only only one sorry yeah with with the degree equal four and you have only one family with degree equal fifty or degree equal yeah. forty. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It makes more sense now. So yeah. these are the, uh, yeah. So vals here would be the the degrees. The names of that table, right? So this yeah. row. This, this would be the degrees. Yeah. And then they take, uh, they like take off the first value because it was the most common perhaps. And that would um, make the histogram more informative. Not sure. <clears throat> and that what oh, sorry, what they do here as well is that they take out the first uh, value as well from the other uh, thing. But anyways, so yeah, what they, they just did dropped the that. first one. They dropped yeah. the most common. Uh, the most common centrality because and, I think it's, it, it would be an outlier. Yeah. But I mean, that's why you use a lock transformation because it brings the outlier, outliers much closer to the actual values. But um, in, in this case, they have already dropped the outlier, right? I, th I think it, it, they dropped the first one, which was uh, much higher than the others. So taking the log, uh, I don't know. Can we like comment these but, out? But if um, uh, they drop out uh, the outlier, I mean, uh, if we, you want to um, and show the correlation between them, why um, why the families with high degrees uh, should be outlier? Uh, no, so here the family with high degrees, uh, this would be the families that have 50 and 40 so we have only one family that has 40 and one family that has 50 but uh, the outlier which might not be an outlier was the families with degree four which was the most common degree in the network and here they have decided to drop it out and only look at the rest which have similar uh, values some somewhat similar values Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm not sure what is uh, the purpose of this graph. What are they trying to measure? If you could go back and see. Okay. They look at their distributions. That's it. Ah, okay. Uh, perhaps. How many nodes have centralities of a given value? Okay. How many nodes have centralities of a given value? So this is the table function, what the table function does. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the logarithmic scaling has let made the values on both axes be quite similar. Oh. <clears throat> Okay, but I'm not sure also how can this be interpreted, uh, what, would yeah, me too. what it would mean yeah. uh, in the larger context of things. Yeah, anyways, um, so another question they asked was, do their marriage partners have more marriage partners than they do? And uh, what they would do here is compare the K nearest neighbors to the degree centrality. So degree centrality mm -hmm. is the number of edges, whereas the K nearest neighbors here would near measure the number of edges of the neighbors, I believe, uh, but I'm not sure. Um, Have you run this part of the code? Uh, yeah. So here, yeah. 
and then run neighbor degree. So strategy, for example, is quite low. Where is um, No. Okay, so what KNN does, it looks at the, the average nearest neighbor degree. Okay. Okay. So it, uh, for each node, it looks on all the, for each family, it looks uh, to the connected families. And then it divides their centrality by the number of connected nodes. I'm not sure I quite catch that. Oh. So for, for example, the if, if a family connected to 10 other families, yeah. you will have a vector equal 10. And each entry, you will have the degree of each family. And then you will sum them up and divide them by That's 10. The average. Yeah. yeah. But then this is, uh, yeah. yeah. Here, maybe if the Strogi and the Medici, what what is the value of their K and N here? So it's eight. Um, is eight, and I believe in which is quite low as well. Eight. It's the third one. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's eight point seven. So. Yeah, because they are connected to, they are highly connected. Mm -hmm. And so it averages out to be lower values. Oh, whereas but, the rest but, connected ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I here you are those. taking the the mean again. Am I right? Yeah, so it's the mean. Uh, uh, the question they asked was, uh, do their marriage partners, the families in general, marriage partners have more marriage partners than they do? And so they compared the mean of neighbor decrees to the mean of decrees. Uh -huh, and, uh, okay. Yeah. And the histogram also serves to illustrate this quite beautifully. Um, so, uh, here it's much more closer to uniform distribution, whereas the degree centrality is is highly skewed. Um, and as they go on to explain, we see that most of the most nodes in the marriage network have low between the centrality um, between this. Um, I'm not sure why between this com comes up here, um, but anyways. Um, yeah, so degree distributions tend to be right skewed, and even the distributed degree is, is much fair. And then we go uh, over centralization, right? So this is quite a nice explanation, uh, saying that the closer the network gets to looking like a star, the higher the centralization score will be. Um, Um, yeah. So I'm not also sure what they did with the code here. Yeah. Um, so what is centralization dot degree? Um, I'm not familiar with this function centralization degree. Yeah. Because it's different compared to the ones they've used before. So it must have be must be transformed them in some new way, I guess. Um, but what we can at least capture from that is that between this is less than eigenvectors, but it's higher than closeness. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> and then they go on to compare it against uh, a baseline using the Barbasi Albert model. Um, simulating a preferential attachment network. Um, so they compare it against that network and what comes out is that graph measuring power against centralization. I, I think some of the explanation of centralization is missing. Um, there was a sudden leap in the logic, in the flow of logic being explained.
So it goes on to calculate the centralizations using the centralization of the decree for the Parbasi network, and then uh, plots them against one another uh, using Rigi plot. And, and that's what comes out. Um, the next question they asked was what proportion of nodes can any node reach at end steps? And this is actually quite an interesting question. So uh, if that proportion of node is two, uh, then uh, yeah, uh, at, uh, sorry, if the number of steps is two, then the uh, accessibility of more connected networks is quite high, whereas of the less connected networks is quite low. And as you increase the number of steps, uh, the scaling favors the less connected ones more than the more connected ones. And so you see here, uh, the more central ones are larger. And as we increase that, uh, the ones in the periphery start to bloom in a sense, right? And by step number five, we find that almost all of them uh, are equal in, in size essentially. Right. And that's what I actually wanted to connect with the bonus distance, what's it called? Bonasich distance centrality. Um, but again, this is like very, very speculative. I haven't done the homework on that to properly understand how it works. Uh, yeah, anyways, this is the very last thing I wanted to cover today, which is the distance weight in reach. And uh, they don't even uh, explain exactly how it goes, but they create a matrix of geodesic distances, which is the sorted paths uh, of the matrix, and they remove the diagonals with one. Uh, it would be something else, I think, NA or zeros. They make it one so that the thing doesn't crash. And then they convert it into weights, and then uh, which is the reciprocal of those distances. And then they sum the distances for each node. And what you find here is the... Uh, weighted not average but uh, the inverse or the reciprocal of the uh, average of the shortest distances uh, for each node connecting to the other nodes right so uh, yeah that's that's what it is and um, this is the final graph we're going to look at, I promise. <laughs> so as you can see, uh, it doesn't uh, do a lot to distinguish uh, the central fabrics from the peripheral ones. Um, however, the less connected families over here are uh, not uh, very favored by this uh, measure of centrality. Yeah, um, that was wild. That was quite the chapter. That was very challenging for me to take as my first chapter in this journal club, but <laughs> I hope I did a good enough job. Yeah, um, I, I agree that this is one of the the most central chapters of, of the book. Yeah, because the concept, <laughs> of, cent the most, the concept of centrality, uh, yeah, it's uh, one of the most wi widely used uh, tools mm -hmm. from the network analysis but it's also not very not very easy to get your head around from the first time mm -hmm. and if you think that three or four measures are much uh, <laughs> there is this blog you know like it, it, it has like a periodic periodic table of uh, of the of uh, network centrality measures so it's like just a periodic table of uh, centrality measures uh, but i i think i will before leaving i will share with you this uh, very short series of blogs so it's like three blogs by uh, a developer a very active developer and uh, in r that he develops a lot of uh, network packages and graph packages so i would highly recommend you to go through the text you can forget about the code but just go through the the text because he explains centrality in a nice way and he shows uh, some beautiful plots using tidy graph 
Uh, and if you are actually interested in network analysis or in graph analysis, I would highly recommend you to follow to follow him uh, on his blog. It, it, it's amazing, yeah. The the packages that he develops and uh, and many of the blogs that he explains, he, he does a really amazing job. But yeah, th thanks a lot for the. <laughs> For Thank this, you for, uh, for sharing those three. blogs. I will uh, definitely go over them later. My and, pleasure. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, today as much as I did. Um, yeah. Indeed. Thank you all for being here and uh, see you next Sunday. See you. Bye. Yeah. Thank bye you, bye. Mike. Bye.